In this video, we're simplifying a pretty complicated resistor network all the way down to the simplest possible circuit. At that point, we will be able to find out what the total current is in the circuit, and then we work our way backwards to figure out all the details on every resistor in the combination. The way I ask about all, all these details is through a series of questions to compute the current in each branch, the power dissipated by each resistor, the terminal voltage of the battery, which means the voltage from A to B here, where little r is the internal resistance of the battery. And then finally, we get these potential differences at different nodes in the circuit. And I asked for magnitudes of those. In other words, we're not quite keeping track of sine yet, but we'll be there soon. So just to prepare for part A, I'm going to label the currents here in each branch. I'm going to call this I1 coming into node C, and then I2 running through the middle branch, and I3 running through the right hand branch of the circuit so let's start simplifying things the first thing i notice is that i have two resistors that are definitely in series and that's r2 and r3 so we're going to combine those into a series equivalent resistor and redraw the circuit this is how series resistors combine you simply add their resistances and i get 10 plus 10 which gives me 20 ohms and my new circuit looks like this after this first simplification, I noticed that this 20 ohm resistor and 10 ohm resistor are in a parallel combination. I can tell for sure this is true because the potential difference across them is guaranteed to always be the same because their high sides are connected by wire and their low sides are connected by wire. So we combine those parallel resistors. And when we're combining parallel resistors, this is how it works. One over the equivalent is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. You plug those into a calculator, 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10, and then take 1 over the result to get REQ. And I get 6.67 ohms for this, just keeping three sig figs on everything. And we redraw our circuit again. Now clearly these three resistors left in the circuit are in series. And we're finally going to get down to a single equivalent resistance. REQ is going to be 10 plus 0.8 plus 6.67 ohms, and I get a total of 17.5 ohms. And we redraw the circuit one last time. Now that the circuit has been simplified all the way down to the simplest possible circuit with just one battery and one resistor, we can find the total current in the circuit. And this is the moment where we begin working backwards through the circuit. So I get I total, that's gonna be V over R, there's a voltage of 9 volts across a 17 and a half ohm equivalent resistance. And I get 0.514 amps for that current. Now that last equivalent resistor came from a series combination and all those resistors share the same current as the equivalent resistance. So now I have the current through each of these. I is equal to 0.514 amps. I is equal to 0.514 amps through that 10 ohm resistor and then through the little internal resistance of 0.8 ohms, 0.514 amps. Since we have the current and the resistance on those three resistors, then we can find the voltage drop over all three of those. V is IR, so I'm going to take 0.514 amps and multiply it by 6.67 ohms on this resistor and I get a voltage drop of 3.43. Then I'll get this one, the 10 ohm resistor at the top. So I take IR again, so 0.514 times 10, that's 5.14 volts. And finally I get the voltage drop on the internal resistance, 0.514 amps multiplied by 0.8 ohms and I get 0.411 volts for that voltage drop. Knowing the voltage drop on the equivalent resistance that came from a parallel combination back here allows me to find the voltage drop across each of those individual resistors. So what these parallel resistors share in common is the voltage over them. So they're going to have the same voltage drop as the equivalent resistance, 3.43 volts. And having the voltage drop over them and the resistance allows me to get the current through each branch of the parallel combination. I is V over R. 3.43 over 20 gives me the current through the 20 ohm resistor, and that's 0.172 amps. I do the same thing here. I equals V over R, and that's 3.43 volts over 10, or 0.343 amps 
Now I didn't do anything to the 10 ohm resistor up here or the internal resistance over here, so I could just copy their numbers. And in our final step back, we're gonna take that 20 ohm series equivalent resistance and break it back into the two individual 10 ohm resistors. And each of those is going to share the same current as the equivalent resistance. So that's I equals 0.172 amps. This allows me to get the voltage drop across that. This V equals IR 0.172 times 10, and I get 1.72 volts. And just by symmetry, the other one has all the same numbers, the same current, of course, because they're in series, same voltage, because all the numbers are the same. IR is gonna be 1.72 volts. And I'll go ahead and copy the numbers over for R4. Okay, so at this point, I can declare that the circuit has been completely solved because we know all the details about every single resistor. And then we can apply that knowledge to answer any questions that were given about the circuit. So part A said to compute the current in each branch of the circuit. So all of these have been done already. I1 is 0.514 amps. I2, that's through the middle branch of the circuit, is 0.172 amps. And I3, that's through the right-hand branch of the circuit, is 0.343 amps. We should check that this makes sense at node C. That's where the current gets split into two pieces. So I want to check that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. When I look at I2 plus I3, I have 0.172 amps plus 0.343 amps. And that gives me 0.515 amps, which is only slightly different than I1 due to rounding errors. So I'm not concerned about that. In part B, we're asked for the power dissipated by each resistor. So let's start with the power dissipated by the internal resistance in the battery. And I'll call that P little r. And I'm just going to be consistent and use the same formula on every one of these to make it quicker. I'm going to use I squared r on every single one of them. This is going to be 0.514 squared times 0.8. And I get 0 0.211 watts. Now I'll do P1, power dissipated by R1. And again, I'm going to use I squared R. That's 0.514 squared times 10 ohms. And I get 2.64 watts. When I look at R2 and R3, they have the same current and the same resistance, so they're going to have the same power dissipated. So P2 is equal to P3, and it's going to be I squared R, and that's 0.172 squared times 10. And these turn out to be 0.296 watts. And finally, I get P4 is I squared R. That's 0.343 squared times 10 ohms and I get 1.18 watts. All right, now we're asked for the terminal voltage of the battery. And so the way I like to look at this is I'll say that I'm starting at point A. So I'm gonna say I start with a voltage of VA. You might wanna call that zero, but I'm just trying to keep it general and call it VA. And then I travel a path all the way to node B. And when I do that, I have to jump from the low side of the battery to the high side, so VA plus nine volts. And then I go over a resistor in the same direction as the current. That means I'm dropping in voltage because current flows from the high side to the low side. So minus 0.411 volts. And then I arrive at B, so that should be equal to the voltage at point B. Then what I mean by the terminal voltage is VB minus VA. And that's going to be 9 minus 0.411. And I end up with a terminal voltage of 8.59 volts. Again, a non-ideal power source when it's actually hooked up to a circuit will have a terminal voltage that's less than its ideal EMF of 9 volts, so slightly less. Now I want the magnitudes of the following potential differences. This is important because when we're studying resistor networks in the physics lab, this is what we're actually able to measure most conveniently with a multimeter. The multimeter has two sharp probes on it, and we can stick those into a pair of holes anywhere on the breadboard and measure a potential difference very conveniently. Measuring current is not so easy because you have to put ammeters in in series. So in practice, this is what we need to be able to compute and test against in the lab. So VBC is the potential difference between node B and node C, and all that's in there is a single resistor 
and I know the potential difference over that resistor, it was 5.14 volts. So it's that simple. And then VCD, again, all that's in there is a single resistor R2, and the potential drop across that was 1.72 volts. And how about VBD? So the potential difference between node B and node D. Well, I'm going to step down by 5.24 volts and then another 1.72 volts. So my total drop is going to be 5.14 volts plus 1.72 volts. Again, I was just asking for magnitude here. And what we're looking at is a drop in voltage, meaning that the potential at B is higher than D by this amount. And when I add these together, I get a potential difference of 6.86 volts. So you should be able to wire this up on a breadboard and then put the probes of the multimeter at node B and node D, and it will read 6.86 volts, plus or minus, depending on the order that you hook the probes up in. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.